Good morning everyone, I'm TJ and today I will show you how you can mesh the load frame example from section 3.8 in Pavel Goncharov's book Engineering Analysis with NX Advanced Simulation. It's a load frame that comprises various element types, solid elements, shell elements, 1D elements and 0D elements. You will learn how to apply or generate a mid-surface, how you can mesh it and how you can inherit the thickness of the basic solids to the 2D elements. Then I will show you some mapped and free solid meshing, uh, how you can model uh, concentrated masses, 0D elements, and RB2s, which are rigid 1D elements. Then I will use mesh mating conditions to connect the uh, meshes across the different solids. There will be another video that demonstrates how you can set up the simulation, solve and post-process this model. So stay tuned. This is the model. Um, the blue frame um, is thin wall, so I will try to make mid-surfaces on that structure and then mesh it with shell elements. Uh, the green parts, the solid brackets, uh, will be meshed with hex elements. Uh, the brown parts will be free meshed with tet elements. Then there are some missing details which I will represent with the concentrated masses which I will apply in the center of RB2 elements. The first thing I'll do is to go to the application task pre and post. Then I will choose the part file and I will create a new fem and uh, an idealized part. There we are. Then I make my idealized part, my displayed part, and I have to promote all solids or parts in this one. Okay. Uh, I will start with the frame. So I want to uh, remove from the display uh, these solid bodies. Right-click, hide. So there we are. And as you can see, these are rather thin-walled. And that's why I want to use shell elements. I then use the command mid-surface by face pairs. And I choose all solids. There are two. And then I automatically create face pairs by this button. And I choose to hide the solid bodies. So there we are. Now you can see I have created a new model, which is a surface model based on the solids. Then I can go back to the FEM model. I display the FEM part. And I'm ready to make a shell mesh on the mid surfaces. So then I want to remove from the display all solid bodies. In order to connect the meshes, I want to stitch all edges. And you as you can see here, all these um, um, pink edges, they have to be stitched. They are open, so the meshes will not be consistent there. So I choose all the parts and I press OK. Then all surfaces, mid-surfaces will be stitched. And then it's ready to be meshed with 2D meshing. I choose all the surfaces. And uh, the element size is OK, 50 millimeters. And I use the subdivision method. Uh, in order to avoid small elements due to irregularities in the ge geometry, I choose not to, to adopt the mesh to small details. And that's why I use this slide and I put it to zero. And I, then I press OK. There are a few elements which are violating the, the requirements. But I can live with that. So it looks like a OK mesh. Then I have to give it a thickness. And um, I go to the sh thin shell property. And here I don't want to give it a specifically specific thickness because then I have to check uh, all solids, the thickness of them. So I right click on this one and use edit mesh associated data. And here I can use 
um, orientation angle, thickness source, mid surface. Okay. Then uh, all shell elements will inherit the solid thickness that was used to create the mid surface. I know I can also right click on this one and I can edit display. And then I can activate element thickness and offset and OK. Then we can inspect to see if the shell elements has have got the right thickness and it looks good. OK, so let's switch off the elements for a while because we need some RB2 elements and we can apply them at once. I use 1D connection and I can use point to edge. That's OK. Uh, I then use the point constructor. I use between two points and I want to have a point between these two points, which will be in the middle of the tube. And I press OK. Then I choose edges and I choose the edges in that section. OK. So if I now s s go to the line view option, you can see how it looks like. That should be fine. And then I use 1D connection once more. I know I don't want to use point to edge, but point to surface. And I use the same point constructor to choose a point between two other points. And I choose that one and that one. OK, and then I choose the surface. Then you see I have an RB2 element there. Then I use the same point constructor once more. OK, OK. And face is this one. So there I've created three RB2 elements. And the intention is to add lump masses in these three points, the center point of these rigid elements. So then I go to, I have to choose more. I have to find the one the zero D mesh button, create zero D mesh, and then I choose the center point in the RB2 element there, and that one, and then I will create a concentrated mass of type 2, and I can edit the mesh, mesh associated data at once, and I can apply, I think it was 800 kilos that was specified in the book. So there I created two uh, elements. Then I want to create another concentrated mass element in that center. And I have to specify another mass there, which I think was 500 kilos. OK. And then I want to switch on the shell mesh again. Go back to solid view. So there the frame should be ready. Then I can pick up my solid parts again. Polygon bodies, solid bodies, close. And I can switch off my 2D shell mesh. Then <coughs> I will start meshing the with brick elements, the brackets. Then I use the option 3D swept mesh. And I can use multi-body infer target because this is a very simple geometry. So I choose that surface, that surface, and that one. Uh, the element size, 20 millimeters, and I use uh, C hexa 8 elements, that's OK. At least for demo purposes. Apply. So there you see. But you also can notice that these meshes are not coincident or connected. That's because I forgot to mesh mate those stru structures. So I have to mesh mate these three solids. And also these. And uh, these as well. Because these are, part this is uh, partitioned geometry. And in order to connect the meshes from the individual parts, I have to mesh mate them. Otherwise, 
those will be act like rigid bodies in a finite element analysis analysis they will not be connected to anything else and that will probably cause a lot of problems so there I used mesh mating and notice that I got um, a symbol here the FEM model which tells me that I need to update it and I do now you can see that the mesh is connected along the edges the common surfaces here and that's good then I can do uh, the same meshing on this side I use swept meshes on these three bodies press apply and now since I used uh, the mesh mating command uh, these meshes are connected and looks really fine then I do the same here and I choose to select these surfaces because then the swept measure can create a surface mesh and sweep them along the thickness of the solid press OK apply then you see the mesh is consistent between the surfaces then I take these two and it looks fine to me then we have to do the same on the other side I choose this surface that one that one that one and apply and these two uh, then I hex mesh the brackets and um, <coughs> these meshes are now connected since I used mesh mating then it's time for the um, cylindrical parts and I'll use tet mesh I notice that I'm not using mesh mating here because I will apply contact and gluing in the simulation file later so I s choose all the brown parts here and the size is okay uh, in the book um, they used the C tetra 4 elements I really hate them they are really bad so I try to avoid them so I use C tetra 10 and an uh, element size which is a bit bigger than in the that recommended in the book press OK so there we are and now I can just to uh, differentiate the meshes it could be nice to uh, give them a different color we choose all the tet meshes here right click edit display and we can choose for example blue there we are and then I can activate the 2d meshes uh, again and switch off the geometry so now we just see the finite element models the last thing I have to do is to assign the materials so I switch on the polygon geometry I choose assign materials and I select all parts and the reason why I select the parts is that I want uh, the all the finite element models to inherit the material properties I'm assigning so I choose steel and then all meshes will us will inherit those properties